We recently covered the astonishing and largely unexplained ancient temple known as Kailash, which quietly sits within India. A temple cut out from a solid rock with such precision, such vision and accuracy, it is a feat we would struggle to recreate even to this day, clearly demonstrating an ancient high technology that has undoubtedly been lost over the millennia. Could this temple actually be evidence left by a far older group of people? A remnant left by a far more advanced civilization than that which academia will allow us to publicly discuss within many modern fields of study. Within the Baraba and Nagarjuni hills of the Jihanabad district of India sits another series of rock-cut features. Six crudely cut caves carved into large stones which litter the surrounding hillsides they could be seen as crude and possibly more modern attempts to recreate what can be found on the top of the hill. Known as the Lomas Rishi Cave, cut into an enormous rock, it is the only one out of the many within the area which demonstrates a level of refinement which, literally, boggles the mind. The only cave in the area that has a delicately cut entrance, but also an interior which has seemingly been protected from the elements perfectly preserved in its original state, demonstrating a state of rock cutting which has left the rock polished to a mirror-smooth finish, evidence reinforcing the postulation that this cave and additionally Kailash Temple are remnants left by a far older and once far more advanced culture than officially accepted. The hut-style facade at the entrance to the cave is officially accepted as the earliest example of the ogi-shaped Chaicha Arch or Chandra Shala that was to be an important feature of Indian rock-cut architecture and sculptural decoration for centuries during its post-cataclysmic development. The example here is largely accepted as the specific influence for later examples, of which there are many at later Buddhist sites, such as Ajanta Caves and Kala Caves in Maharashtra. How, or indeed who, cut the Lomas Rishi cave? How did they achieve such an amazing finish to the stonework? Were these same people responsible for the construction of the Kailash temple, also another structure exquisitely cut out of a giant solid stone? Although modern academically accepted views state that they were created during the reign of the Mauryan emperor Ashoki, a Buddhist ruler from the 3rd century BC, who ruled over almost the entire country of India, caves known as Sat Gava were carved into the hills for the use of the monks, Lomas Rishi Cave being said to have been one of them. Yet due to its exquisite quality, it's hard to see just how they can claim this. We have in the past covered but a few of the jewels that can be found in the crown of now lost civilizations which once dwelled within India. And since this, we have found the possible remnants of a number of different flourishments and additional devolutions within the granite historical record of our planet, proof which we can now confidently demonstrate via a number of antediluvian sites which clearly display this cyclical behavior. The Ellora Cave System, for example, one of the most well-finished and thus precisely executed of which Kalish Temple, a site we have previously covered. Yet, I digress. There is no possible way to define how long a religion can survive. As such, the fact that at least three different religious influences can be found upon these miraculous, enormous ancient ruins, once hewn directly from the bedrock of Earth, is proof enough of extraordinary antiquity. Along with these three different religious ages, our previous research among Elora's cave have ourselves found separate tool marks we feel logically left by a mere two separate civilizations, one of the famous cup and spoon mark era, claimed across northern Europe as Neolithic, while the other found upon Kalish and many others throughout India, indicative of yet another world-faring, yet far more globally powerful and capable now lost civilization. According to modern paradigm, quote, the rock-cut activity at Elora Cave, three phases from the 6th century to the 12th century. The earliest caves, 1 through 12, discovered between the 5th and 8th centuries, reflect the Mahayana philosophy of Buddhism then prevalent in this region. The Brahmanical group of caves, 13 through 29, 
including the renowned Kalish, Cave 16, was excavated between the 7th and 10th centuries. The last phase, caves 30 through 34, reflecting the Jaina philosophy. End quote. However, what we do know for a fact, and quite contradictory to the aforementioned mainstream theory, is that this series of 34 caves were all indeed planned and constructed within the abilities available at the era of each of their constructions. Some, indeed, more modern and thusly planned and executed to a more primitive ability. But Kalish and many others along the network are and were incredibly, seemingly impossibly well executed, with unbelievable artistic and complex vision, created with technologies to cut rock of unbelievable and now lost and forgotten technologies, and thus abilities. It is popularly accepted belief systems attached to the sites are of a modern age. However, even this cannot be confirmed. Furthermore, we know that to create such a site would, in the modern age, take unimaginable effort and technologies, taking many, many years. Ergo, no matter what the mainstream explanation may be, or indeed the mounting areas of research and the enigmas we continue to stumble upon, adding to our list of areas of interest, all remain a growing and as yet unsolved mystery which we find highly compelling. A few months ago, we did a video regarding an enigmatic mountain, which rests within modern-day Tibet. We touched upon the amazing legends, speaking of the mountain actually being that of an ancient man-made pyramid, which according to such legends, is placed at the center of the universe. They spoke of a mysterious giant eye placed upon the top of the mountain, an eye which according to said legends, will reveal itself when the ice and snow within the area melts away. Akin to a story containing the Eye of Mordor, yet hopefully not as malevolent. Although Mount Kailash can be found within modern-day Tibet, its location is very close to the borders of India, a place which few know possesses one of, if not the most amazing ancient structure to have ever been discovered or indeed built upon our planet. A structure which dwarfs the Great Pyramids, and indeed the Great Sphinx with artistic wonder. Actually known as the Kailash Temple, it is an exquisitely cut series of supposed praying temples and other communal buildings which was, many thousands of years ago, carved straight out of an enormous horseshoe-shaped rock resting within a hillside. According to mainstream academia, Kailash Temple was somehow built by a primitive people using primitive tools during a duration of 400 years, from 200 BC to 600 BC. However, no one seems to be able to explain how such a primitive culture could have possibly created something so awe-inspiring, something so artistically accurate and wonderful, something we would indeed struggle to recreate today. A structure not only architecturally accurate, but also drenched in a masterpiece of sculpture. Largely accepted as a flawless piece of art, no less than 200,000 tons of stone was masterfully carved away, creating several separate temples, each drenched in tiny artistic detail. Rediscovered in 1819, is it possible that the Hindu decorations found within were merely later additions? Additions to a relic left actually built by a civilization far more advanced and far more ancient than we are allowed to publicly believe? It is understandable for one to wonder, how did a primitive civilization create such a wonder with primitive tools, attaining such a perfection, such refined finish to each tiny detail? It is conveniently unexplained just how they managed to cut into this single block of rock with such precision and indeed vision adorning the structure with thousands of animals. It seems as if it were a tribute, a gift depicting what can be found on our planet. Is Mount Kailash, as legends say, really the center of the universe? Is this mind-bogglingly detailed, most intricately built ancient temple by a long way actually a tribute to this fact? Made up of temples which are all now perceived to be shared between three faiths, Buddhist, Hindu, and Jain. Are these multiple faiths further evidence of a re-inhabitation rather than a construction? The 200,000 tons of rock, for example, 
is nowhere to be found. And, as previously covered in the Kailash video, the same is seen with the apparent enormous excavation found around the base of Mount Kailash itself. Compelling evidence for manipulation of the landscape, giving credence to the legends of it being, in fact, an enormous pyramid. Regardless of this, the fact that the temple carries the same name as this mysterious and still unclimbed mountain within Tibet, we find highly compelling.